Hey guys, Stas here from Stas Brewing with another video uh, brought to you by Beer Co. Today I'm going to be talking to you about yeast starters and why it might be a good idea to start using them. So, yeast starters. What is a yeast starter? Well, a yeast starter is basically a low gravity wort which we are using to propagate yeast which we're going to use to brew a beer. Why might you use a yeast starter? Well, there are two main reasons. Number one, if you've got an older packet of yeast that's maybe getting close to its use by date, uh, or it's, maybe it's come from the homebrew shop a little bit uh, puffed out, this is for wet yeast that is, uh, or it's even past its use by date, you can uh, make up this a little yeast starter with a couple of litres of wort um, fairly quickly, pitch that yeast uh, in there and make sure that the yeast is viable and healthy and build up enough uh, yeast cells to do proper fermentation. But the other reason is if you're brewing either a large batch of standard, when I say standard I'm talking around the 10, uh, 1055 or 1.055 SG um, starting gravity uh, which will give you about a 5% beer. So if you're brewing more than 20-ish litres if you're doing a double batch, uh, you might want to do a yeast starter then, or if you're doing uh, brewing a strong beer, maybe a double IPA, a triple IPA, uh, a Belgian quad, uh, an imperial stout, or something like that, which is going to be up in that sort of 7 plus percent final ABV for the beer, you want to make sure that you have enough yeast to properly ferment that beer uh, to stop it stalling also to make sure that you have a clean fermentation. So let's talk about how we make a yeast starter. We might go into the kitchen for this portion of the video, so I'll see you soon. Right, so here we have all the tools, almost all the tools that we will need to make a yeast starter. We've got some DME here, we've got some scales with a measuring cup, some gloves, a funnel to put the DME into the flask, and of course the flask itself. It's worth noting that this is a special uh, heat resistant flask which can handle being uh, heated directly on a gas stove top and it can also deal with the temperature shock from going to being boiling or hotter than boiling straight into ice cold water. So don't just use any old glass. So normally we would do it on the stove. I would say that if you do do it on the stove, um, make sure you have uh, some gloves because the top of the flask gets really hot. Yes, it might be a long way from the flame, but of course the steam rises up um, and makes the top of the glass super hot. Also, watch it like a hawk once it gets close to boiling because it's very easy to get a boil over. Uh, so it's for that particular reason, I'm going to not boil it on uh, the hot plate. Instead, I've got the water boiled already in the kettle and I'm just going to add it directly to the wort which I'll measure out at a rate of 100 grams per litre. I'm going to make about a 1.6 uh, litre starter for this yeast. So let's do that. So now we've got all the DME in there. Just so make sure that this uh, water is boiling and that will help sanitizing. It's worth pointing out that I have actually sanitized this flask with uh, star sand. So um, yeah, that's the other benefit. If you're doing it on the stove, you gotta watch it like a hawk, but it, you, you really know that the whole flask has been sanitized inside and out because of the heat. So I'm gonna use star sand uh, around the top of here to make sure there's no bugs. So let's get this boiling water in and mix it up. So we're aiming for about 1.6 litres. So, now that we're all up to volumes, we now need to make sure that the DME is, uh, is dissolved. So gloves on, because this is really hot, and just give it a gentle swirl until you see it all dissolve. This might take a while. One other thing I'd add, is good to put some foil on top. Not only will it sort of minimize any spillage that you get, but the steam that's coming off the boiling or near boiling water will actually help to sanitize the rim as the steam tries to escape uh, out the top. It's not quite, probably not as effective 
as if you're actually boiling this uh, on the hot plate itself. But as I said, I'm gonna be using um, sanitizer as a double insurance for this. So, um, so now that that's all mixed in, I've put some ice blocks in cold water. So I'm gonna make this really cold. And then once, once this is cooled down a little bit, I'll transfer the flask and chill down the wort um, down to pitching temps. Just a tip, you'll notice is when you do this yourself, uh, the water around the flask is obviously going to be taking the heat out of the flask. So if you sort of just add a little bit of uh, movement to the water, you'll ensure that there's always cool water uh, touching the outside. And similarly, every now and again, just pick up the flask and give it a swirl because it will cool down the outside first. Um, and then, so if you keep if you keep both of them moving, you're going to get maximum speed of cooling. Also worth noting that uh, you can see I've only filled the uh, sink to the same level as the flask. Obviously, if you keep filling up, the flask will want to float. So uh, yeah, we, we don't want that. You can buy um, weight rings that you can put over the flask to stop it floating, but I this is easy enough um, to do anyway. The yeast that we're going to be uh, making the yeast starter from is this Belle Saison from Lelemons. So as you can see, these are expiry on March 2018. It's now December 2018. So these are about nine months out of date. I'm going to try and uh, reactivate and build up a culture so I can use it in a Saison in time for Christmas. So that's what we'll be using. It's worth noting I have sanitized the packets and the scissors that I'll be using to cut them. So I've just put the uh, dry yeast in. As you can see, there's, now normally that would be far too much yeast for the size starter, but as this is uh, quite old, I'm over pitching. I wanna just see what I can get out of it. So sanitize that, sanitize the plug. Plug, bit of foil. You, do, you don't wanna totally seal it up because you will get some off-gassing, hopefully when this starts fermenting. And I'm gonna leave this in a place where I'll see it, which will remind me to give it a swirl to keep oxygen uh, going in it. You can use a stir plate um, for a much more automated uh, procedure, but it is absolutely not necessary. It is, it can be very convenient to set it on the stir plate and you'll probably get a faster kick off of fermentation, but if you just shake it every time you see it, um, and leave it in a sort of a room temperature spot, preferably away from the light. Um, but yeah, remember it's, it's all about just building up that fermentation. We're not particularly worried about, you know, uh, suppressing ester production or, or things like that. So long as it's within the normal range, uh, this yeast is uh, temperature range is, I think it's 15 to 35 degrees Celsius. So it's a pretty wide range. I'm not terribly worried about this. The wort was uh, around 30, 28, 30 degrees when I put it in there, just for this particular yeast, I know it can handle it, and that's the recommended rehydrating temperature, so that's what I'm doing. So we'll check back in uh, once, hopefully, with some fermentation. Right, so it's been roughly 24 hours since the yeast got crash chilled down. Let's get it out of the fridge. So, as you can see, there's a nice thick layer there. You can see the lighter layer on the top. That's the, the healthy yeast, and the darker stuff is just sediment and perhaps dead yeast cells. Um, so this is pretty much right to go now. Um, what I would suggest you do is decant off uh, most of the wort, leave a little bit there, maybe about 80% of the wort decant off and leave enough so you can swirl around, uh, get all that yeast back up in suspension before you pitch it into your beer. I would also maybe take this out half an hour to an hour before just to let it slowly come back up to room temperature. Um, so when you pitch the beer, there's not a huge uh, temperature shock. You wanna try and always pitch your beer, uh, pitch your yeast within about 10 degrees of um, so the yeast doesn't sort of get shocked by the temperature difference. Um, but yeah, 
that's that's essentially how we are going to make a yeast start. Final tip or an extra step that you can take to help you under, better understand your yeast and also make sure that there's nothing gone wrong with your yeast, especially seeing as this is an older batch that was out of date. Uh, I'm going to actually pour off some of this wort into a glass and have a taste. Now, of course, it's not going to taste like beer, but it will enable you to maybe um, pick up any off flavors, maybe the yeast has gone bad, like if it's, a, if it's gone uh, sour or tart and you're not expecting that in the yeast, um, you can spot that before you taint your whole beer with yeast that is perhaps not in its optimal condition. Um, I also find this a really good uh, way to learn the flavor characteristics of different yeast strains and to kind of build up your knowledge about the various uh, ingredients and what they contribute to the beer on their own. So that's how I go about making a yeast starter and why I choose to make a yeast starter. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. If you have any questions or uh, topics that you'd like us to cover in future videos, make sure you leave a comment down below. There's also links to a blog article on Beerco's website about how uh, Giga Yeast recommend making a, a yeast starter. It's slightly different, but uh, it's basically the same, uh, same concepts. Um, until the next video, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing on behalf of Beerco, wishing everyone a uh, happy Christmas and holiday period, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.